So here we have a drawing from Pablo Picasso of a bowl broken down into several stages, beginning with just something really simple, gestural, um, that's depicting the animal's form in a very simplistic way, and then gradually building up, uh, adding more lines and tones, still kind of keeping that cubist style, uh, working all the way up to something much more of a realistic form of the animal, yet still in his style. Here's a drawing from Andy Warhol. Um, he used to do a lot of advertising illustrations before he became a fine artist. And here he's using a wide range of lines, um, different weights, uh, very bold, uh, something you would see often in advertising. But it still kind of has his, you know, his upbeat style. Um, here's a drawing from David Hockney. Uh, just in line, contour drawing. Um, what I like about this is that even though he's only using line here, uh, really simple contour lines following the form of his uh, of his subjects. Um, higher or, or more weight, darker lines in the foreground. Um, lighter weight, thinner lines conveying distance as the subjects are kind of reclining in the background. And he's also using these hatch lines, hatch lines throughout the folds and the wrinkles of the fabric to convey some, you know, some shadow, some darker tone. And the hatch lines, the short little gestural marks of the hair and the beard back here. I find that really interesting. Um, Vincent van Gogh, a yeah, wide range, different mark making techniques here. His quintessential style of the swirls in these trees. Um, but then he's also got the variations of hatched marks, just simple parallel lines. Uh, overlapping parallel hatch marks here, cross hatch marks going on to convey the different style or different types of uh, crops you see in these fields. Um, really interesting. Leonardo da Vinci, some pages from his journal where he's analyzing the human skull and the eye. Um, again, lots of parallel lines, hatch marks going on, uh, conveying different tones. And he's also, you can see how he's analyzing the proportions of the human head here. Uh, very technical for its time. Um, what I like to do here is how he's annotating. You know, here we have Leonardo da Vinci annotating a page of his journal, just like we should be doing in our journals. Here's a great drawing, um, a contour drawing, uh, cross contour drawing of the human face. And again, just by changing the weight, we get the sense that there might be a darker tone in some of these lines versus where the weight or the line gets much lighter and that weight gets thinner. You can see how it kind of conveys a sense of a highlight in some of these areas. Very interesting. These repeated lines uh, that are kind of repetitious, going back and forth over and over and over again, but they have this direction where it's spiraling in on itself, creating this abstract organic form overall. Even though the lines themselves are very technical and very clean, the overall image has kind of a loose feel to it. Very interesting. Synth kind of goes here, these lines that are veiling the human face, very technical and how it's been applied. Um, these threaded lines that are kind of, you know, spiraling outward as they're paralleling one another, uh, still kind of creating this overall organic kind of feel uh, that's veiling the face. Another uh, contour drawing, uh, kind of defining the shape of these shoes using the bold, thick lines and then thinner lines where there might be highlights. A very gestural drawing. You can see the speed behind these lines. Very quick and very loose, but still capturing the, the motion or that positioning of the, of the human form. Scribbles, probably a very underrated art-making technique, but very effective. Uh, just these scribbling over and over and over again. You can see how tight they've become to create that darker tone. And then as it loosens up, creating the highlights of this area. And I think this really works well with this particular drawing and the expression of the face, the scribbles, you know, it's going to add to that sense of mo emotion there. Interesting drawing, the contrast between the watercolored uh, cat on one side and the line drawing of the cat on the other. It has a very subtle, soft, emotional feel to it. Um, but again, you have these weighted lines, very bold, a little bit darker, and these broker thinner lines conveying conveying where there might be some highlights. Overlapping lines here in this contour drawing, 
again, weighted lines showing the darkness of the legs below and some of the arms in here, and then lighter weighted lines, thinner lines where there might be highlights. An interesting picture here, um, done with, uh, I think this is done with watercolor or, or it might be just paint, uh, acrylic paint or something, I'm not really sure, but it's very gestural, it has some speed behind it, very loose. At first glance, you can't really tell what it is, it feels a little bit abstract, but if you back up and kind of put all the image together and let your eyes kind of focus on the whole thing, you'll see that it's the, um, it's the side portrait of a horse's head. I think that's really interesting. This is great. The, all these lines condensed together, going you know vertical and horizontal all the way across, depicting a very, very busy cityscape. Another contour drawing, but here the line weight does not change at all. What we see throughout the entire drawing in both figures is the same weighted line, but still it's very effective. Yeah? And as simple as this drawing is, this distance between this negative space, that's what kind of conveys the sense of emotion and a feel what's going on there. Another gestural drawing, uh, very quick. You can see the speed in those scribbled lines, but still works really well. Where the lines are coming together, very condensed, creating that tone once again. Where the lines are breaking apart, creating that highlight. Same thing goes here. Very gestural, lots of speed behind it. And that speed and that gestural scribbled quality, that franticness, you can feel it too in the expression of the, of the animal. Uh, abstract scribbled drawing, train underground, kind of interesting. Another loose drawing here done with paint, uh, very loose style, but the way the colors are overlapping, it kind of conveys this kind of depth to it. This is interesting contour drawing contrasted by the dark uh, uh, kind of shadowy figure uh, behind it makes a great composition to working together. The great use of you know varying line quality, and the tight cross hatching going on for the darker shadows, a little bit looser in the hatching in this area here. Really nice piece of street art. Very simple drawing here, right? We got this little human figure down here. Can't tight tell if it's um, is that a painting or a drawing down there, or is it just a figure that's been placed on the uh, on the paper? And then the simple line leading up to the scribble, almost like he's holding on for dear life, and it doesn't take much to convey a message. This is a great drawing, huge drawing of the human hair, just line over line over line, yeah, very tightly woven together to create that. Really impressive. This is a some kind of very technical uh, tessellation drawing, kind of mirrors some of the stuff we've seen with the Islamic art. But really, really interesting. Almost has kind of a, a, a chemistry or a biology kind of feel of something you might be looking at under a microscope. Again, overlapping lines creating that tone. You know? Another tightly done composition conveying that condensed space you might see in an apartment complex or some busy street or busy busy city another technical drawing from its time um, similar to what we saw from uh, leonardo da vinci journal from or a page from his journal uh, variation of hatched lines these short marks here that are kind of creating some of the shorter stubble of the animal's hair longer lines these longer hatch marks in here paralleling each other to create some of the other fur. All throughout here, just continuous mark making, paralleling each other, these hatched marks to create the animal's fur. Then also outlining the animal's eye, creating that form of the whole animal. Really interesting. And again, annotations, just like we should be doing in our journals, you guys, every page balanced between visual and written information. Done with just pen, Overlapping over and over and over and over again, creating that darker tone, line over line over line. Another technical drawing. Um, not a lot of change in the in the weight of the lines here, but we can see if you you know kind of stop and think about it, it almost feels like there's some depth to it. That this area here is kind of protruding towards you, and then back here, the way they've adjusted and elongated some of these shapes, it gives the sense that this this abstract object. It's kind of being pulled backwards further into the picture plane. Lines conveying um, sense of kind of form, 
in the shadow here and this wetness, and kind of how it leads the eye going down, grounding the overall picture. Really interesting. Done while he was blindfolded. He drew for an hour on the wall blindfolded. Very subjective, uh, whether or not this was a successful drawing or not, but I do find this really interesting, just in the variation from the tone and the way the lines are kind of spread out in different areas, creating this darker tone to these highlights. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely something to slow down and look at. Interesting little piece here. Uh, mostly the same weight all throughout. It kind of reminds me of um, an epiphany. Somebody's idea just kind of exploding out of their head. So there you go. A wide range of line types can be used for all different reasons. Artists use all types of lines and all types of different arc making um, styles. A lot of different characteristics and qualities and lines we use. So that's why we practice. That's why we pick up a tool and we practice with these different tools.